Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 31. This is a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story for my personal taste. And I have to be a bit honest with you guys, I'm a little disappointed because we haven't reached the like goal in the past few rewrites. So in this rewrite I'm not gonna ask for a like goal, I'm just gonna ask you guys to like the video if you support the series and if you wanna see it continuing, it really means a lot because these videos take much more work than normal videos in the channel. But let's get to it. Sasuke leaves the casino after interrogating Gaizo. He must get back to his team fast. They cannot waste time if they want to intercept this spy, Kado. But Sasuke sees something with his Sharingan. Coming his way in the sewer tunnel, it looks like a sensory barrier. He can see the chakra. It's too late. He's been found. The good news is that, by the looks of the Jutsu, it's not Naruto. It would be very much like him to meddle with Sasuke's revenge again, over and over. Perhaps this other ninja isn't even after him, but just another person that wants to see Gaizo. The best course of action is to calmly enter the barrier and use sheer intimidation to pass by. Sasuke does so, breaking through the barrier. As he approaches the caster, he sees his face, illuminated by the light coming out of the hole Sasuke had made in the casino door. It's not Naruto, but his master. One problem after another. But looking at Jiraiya's face, Sasuke could start solving them now. Sasuke Uchiha walks towards Jiraiya's direction. The boy looks so calm, sure of himself, as if the situation is completely under control. Sasuke doesn't even acknowledge Jiraiya's presence there. Sasuke, stop. We need to talk. Jiraiya says to no avail because Sasuke keeps on walking, as though Jiraiya doesn't even exist. I thought we could talk like adults. Man to man, Sasuke. I don't want to start a fight. Sasuke walks past Jiraiya, their arms almost touching. Jiraiya grabs Sasuke's shoulder, but Sasuke shakes him off with a brisk motion, untangling Jiraiya's arm. He continues to walk over the sewage water, not looking back at Jiraiya. This is not going the way he wanted. This way Jiraiya will be forced to act. Do you even know who I am, Sasuke? For the first time, he stops and turns back towards Jiraiya. You are Orochimaru's punching bag. Word of advice, stay out of my way. I killed Orochimaru. Easily. You have no chance against me, just go about your business. I'm afraid I can't do that. You know I can't let you go. Sasuke turns his whole body now towards Jiraiya. Well then, we are at a crossroads. I see you're not meeting my eyes. Probably a good idea. Think about it, Sasuke. The Leaf Village wants to eliminate Itachi as well. If you return, the village will provide you the necessary resources to do so. You don't understand, do you? I must be the one to kill Itachi. The destroyer of the Uchiha clan must be killed by the last Uchiha. If that doesn't happen, then the clan will never regain its honor. It will forever be a clan of victims, a clan of weaklings. Besides, the Leaf Village was never invested in hunting down and killing Itachi to begin with. When I leave the village and become more powerful than any shinobi there could ever dream of, you want me back to use me as a resource, enticing me with offers to kill my bastard brother. The presence of this boy is powerful, Jiraiya feels pressure oozing off of him. He has to bring him back for Naruto's sake. Naruto doesn't deserve to suffer more because of him. Maybe Naruto would want to do it himself, but he can talk to Sasuke once he's back in the village and sort things out. Jiraiya has been nothing more than a sequence of failures for Naruto. It's time for him to do something right. That's not it, Sasuke. You have friends in the leaf. Going from place to place with no home, it can't be pleasant. It can't be a life you want. You don't have to walk this path alone. Alone. <laughs> Yes, I have. From the moment my family died, I was condemned to a path of darkness others couldn't follow. Comfort, kinship, kindness, camaraderie, love. These are concepts that died when I was seven years old. For they only weakened the will, and for an Avenger, the will is everything. I once had bonds with those in the leaf, but look at what they did. I became complacent, laughing, satisfied with an easy life where the trees were green and the sky was clear. But now, the world has turned gray, and the skies will cry the tears of my kin who died because of a man's whim. When I strike upon him, I revenge. And what will you do after that? 
Sasuke hadn't even thought about it. For him, there was no such a thing as a life where his goal wasn't revenge. There is no purpose. The only thing he must do is to kill his brother. If you only know hatred, you will simply redirect that hatred against something else. Itachi deserves to die, but justice and revenge are inherently different. What do you know about revenge? I also had a friend who lost his way, and then he killed one of the most important people to me. I failed my students, I failed everyone. I know one thing or two about life, and you know that Naruto will never give up. There will come a day you will fight each other again and get hurt badly, or even die, and I will protect Naruto from that fate. Preposterous. Why does everyone in that village think they are more important than they actually are? I have no interest whatsoever in the leaf. And Naruto much less, tell him to grow up and break away from his fabricated reality. Whatever friendship he thinks he had with me, it's long dead. Let me go and you'll spare yourselves a great deal of pain. I see how it is. Jiraiya and Sasuke remain absolutely still. Sasuke staring at Jiraiya with his red eyes. Jiraiya averts his gaze looking for any subtle movements. They are about 10 meters away from each other. The only sound that permeates the tunnel is of the fatted water running beneath their feet. Lion mane! Jiraiya's hair erupts towards Sasuke into the shape of several lions that open their mouths, occupying almost the entire tunnel. Sasuke unsheathes his sword, lacing it with lightning. His blade becomes an azure blur as he slashes through thick swaths of hair with great elegance. Jiraiya weaves hand signs and spits a thin fire mist in between the attacking hair strands. Sasuke summons a Fuma Shuriken with his offhand, weaving one-handed seals from behind his back. He laces it with lightning as well and tosses in Jiraiya's direction. The Shuriken shears the fire missile in half. Both halves impact each side of the tunnel, cracking the walls and lifting dust and ash around them, obscuring the vision. The impact diverts the Shuriken's trajectory, making it hit the ceiling and get stuck on it, close to where Jiraiya stands. Sasuke dashes through the smoke and as soon as he exits, Jiraiya Jiraiya sends another barrage of hair lions. They are once again cut by Sasuke's lightning sword. This time, however, Sasuke weaves one-handed hand signs with his off hand and several white snakes emerge from Sasuke's arm, opening their mouths, targeting Jiraiya. Jizo needles! Jiraiya's hair wraps itself around him, forming sharp spikes. Only Jiraiya's eyes are visible as the snakes impact the hair shield that pierces through them, drawing blood, preventing their fangs from piercing Jiraiya's skin. Sheathing his sword, Sasuke pulls on his left arm, using the snakes as pieces of rope, and Jiraiya as an anchor to propel himself towards the Sanin. He ignites a Chidori. Jiraiya attempts to move back, but the snakes are grappling him in place. The hair shield shoots small spikes at Sasuke's left arm, which cannot move as he pulls himself with it. This forces Sasuke to release the grapple and move his arm out of the way of the spikes as Jiraiya manages to jump back just in time to avoid Sasuke's Chidori. The Chidori extends, forming a spear that pierces through Jiraiya's hair shield, hitting Jiraiya on the stomach and exiting through the other side of his body. Jiraiya puffs into white smoke. The real Jiraiya emerges from behind Sasuke, Rasengan in hand. He was hiding in my own shadow. Sasuke thinks, looking back, Jiraiya is about to strike him with a Rasengan. The shuriken that was stuck in the ceiling puffs into smoke, transforming into Sasuke who uses chakra to stand upright on the ceiling and swings at Chidori coming from above at Jiraiya, forcing him to dodge and lose speed. The Sasuke on the ground, manages to duck below the Rasengan strike, spins around and lands a roundhouse kick on Jiraiya's stomach, throwing him back dozens of meters. The Sasuke clawn on the roof weaves hand signs, water style, water fang missile. Sharp water spikes erupt from the sewage below, right where Jiraiya is about to land. Jiraiya whips his Rasengan around, striking the water fangs and destroying them with a flashy swirly maneuver as he lands on top of the water. Sasuke's shadow clone that was standing on the ceiling puffed into smoke. So after his fire style hit the wall, he created a stand-in clone and dashed into the smoke at the same time as I did. He used that chance where my Sharingan was obscured to catch me with a hiding and shadow jutsu. This fight will take more time than I can spare. Sasuke thinks, 
Looking at Jiraiya, the sage is surprised at Sasuke's cunning and strength. He could hardly believe the ninja he was facing was the same age as Naruto. If he had lowered his guard, Sasuke's shuriken misdirection would have gotten him. The boy can weave one-handed signs, he's never seen that. At first, when Sasuke launched the shuriken, he thought it was just a normal attack enhanced by lightning style. However, looking up the ceiling where the shuriken impacted, one of the shurikens was still stuck in there. Next to it, there was just a hole made by the other shuriken. Sasuke actually created a shadow clone behind him and transformed that clone into a Fuma shuriken. He then summoned a normal shuriken and laced it with lightning and used the shadow shuriken jutsu to hide his shadow clone shuriken underneath the lightning shuriken, which was thrown ever so slightly ahead of the clone shuriken, meaning it would hit Jiraiya's fire style before and counter it. When the lightning style shuriken was diverted towards the ceiling, no doubt because Sasuke aimed at a particular angle so that it would take that trajectory, he must have used wires to direct his clone shuriken along with the lightning style shuriken to make them impact at the same time and almost at the same place. Sasuke planted a shadow clone waiting to be deployed just above Jiraiya. This type of jutsu combination requires a lot of talent and ability, but also diligent training and intelligence. The last time Jiraiya saw Sasuke, he was nothing more than a harmless Genin. To have a evolved so much in a little over three years. His training must have been insane. Jiraiya can't help but to feel as though he wasn't a good master for Naruto. Sasuke has become so strong. Orochimaru really has him beaten, even when training their pupils. And yet, this boy killed Orochimaru. There's something strange about Sasuke too. He used the Hidden Shadow Snake's Jutsu, Orochimaru's signature ability. Jiraiya knows he taught that to Anko, his former pupil, but Sasuke's snakes were white. Jiraiya wonders. Only Orochimaru's snakes were that color. How was that possible? Jiraiya says. Sasuke smirks. I told you I killed Orochimaru. But let's just say that was a euphemism. Now, get out of my way. Yeah, I think we're past that point now. Jiraiya weaves hand signs and touches the disgusting sewer wall. Summoning art. Toad stomach trap. The thick muscles of the rock-dwelling giant toad of Mount Miyoboku appear all around the sewer tunnel. I'm sorry for summoning you in a stinky place like this. The muscles surround Sasuke and large sections of it leap towards him. His feet sink into the muscle below as the stomach traps Sasuke in place. Chidori stream. Lightning ignites around Sasuke's entire body. Body. He uses his sword laced with it and slashes the attacking muscle. Sasuke manages to break away from Jiraiya's muscle ground and dashes in the opposite direction from Jiraiya. The muscle wall gives chase. Stomach protrusions target Sasuke, forcing him to keep on cutting them. He attempts to slash at the wall itself, but the muscle is way too thick. He can't cut through it. Jiraiya runs after Sasuke. Give up, Sasuke! There's no way out of this! Sasuke approaches the end of the tunnel, blocked by a section of the stomach. There is no escape. Weaving one-handed seal, Sasuke spits a fireball that engulfs the entire circumference of the tunnel. The muscle stomach creates a wall in front of Jiraiya, blocking the fireball, which erupts in a violent, fiery explosion. Karin, Jugu, and Sugetsu dash through Makiri outpost, trying to get to Sasuke. This powerful chakra is sensed. Sasuke is fighting against a person underneath the city. Karin screams in desperation. It's that guy who sensed before. He's too powerful. We have to get to him no matter what, Jugo says. Sugetsu seems annoyed and apprehensive. He doesn't feel like fighting someone strong now, especially someone that can give Sasuke trouble. He then notices something. Smoke is coming out of his ninja bag. Hey! Stop! We have to get to a quiet place! Karin and Jugo look at Suigetsu's pouch, understanding. Team Heavy jumps into the backyard of a smith shop. Suigetsu opens his bag and sifts through his kunai, shurikens, and several scrolls. He finally sees it, the scroll giving off the dark smoke. As he expected, the snake seal had vanished from it. He opens the scroll and uncorks a small vial filled with Sasuke's blood, dropping it on the scroll. Suigetsu weaves hand signs and touches his hand on the scroll. Summoning Jutsu! A Five meter long white snake appears. It has Sharingan eyes. The creature opens its mouth and Sasuke squeezes himself out of it. He's not hurt. Karin breathes a sigh of relief. What's the big idea, Sasuke? Make it us get you out of trouble? She says, trying to hide her affection for him. Wow, man. You smell like shit, literally. Suigetsu says, covering his nose. Is everything alright, Sasuke? What happened down there? Jugo says. Listen up. We don't have much time and I have a mission for you. Sasuke says, ignoring all of them. You will raise to Tahuna City a 
effective immediately. There, you will look for a man named Kado. He's a ninja from the village hidden in the snow. Tall, slim, blonde, has a scar on his face and carries three swords. He might have information on Itachi's whereabouts, but he will leave Tahuna City soon. It's north of here, you have to go now. But Sasuke, who are you fighting against? Aren't you coming with us? I was fighting Jiraiya, the Toad Sage. I will remain here and take care of him. If I don't do that, he will pursue us until Tahuna City and will never catch Kado. You have to go now, trust me. So he gets to turns pale after hearing Jiraiya was here fighting Sasuke. He was Orochimaru's rival after all. There's nothing a guy like him could do against Jiraiya. No Sasuke, we have to stay and fight him together. We can get the information later, Jugo says. I had to say, but I agree. This guy is dangerous. You'll need some backup, Karin says. No, no, come on. We have to get the information, guys. It's the only way to find out where Itachi is. I'm sure Sasuke can handle this guy just fine. Suigetsu says, sweating profusely. Suigetsu's right. Go, Sasuke says with a tone of finality. Karin and Jugo seem worried, but they take Sasuke's orders. Suigetsu melts in relief. Let's go, let's go, let's get going. He gestures for Karin and Jugo to come with him. Team Heavy departs in haste, leaving Sasuke alone. He jumps on the rooftops of a Makiri outpost, leaping through them and looking for Jiraiya, trying to catch his attention. Jiraiya dashes through the sewers, looking for an exit. After he blocked Sasuke's fireball, the boy summoned a snake that swallowed him and disappeared. He used the reverse summon jutsu to escape his toe's stomach trap. But as it was a reverse summon, he probably has allies nearby that will summon him back close to the place he was. Jiraiya has intel that Sasuke is traveling with others, though he doesn't know how many or who they were. If Sasuke is still in the city or in the outskirts, Jiraiya can track him down. But first, he will be facing the Sharingan. Jiraiya must be ready and take proper measures. He summons a toad. So small, Jiraiya's hand dwarfs him. The tiny orange toad seems surprised. Lord Jiraiya, you, you summoned me? Saikichi, I will need your help for this fight. Have you developed enough chakra to release one discharge? Yes, after all those good years of training, I have finally done it. I can do it once, one charge. Good, then let's use it in the appropriate moment. Jiraiya tugs the small toad inside of his clothes and leaves the sewers leaping towards the rooftops of Makiri Outpost. He summons another toad, this one about the size of a dog. Kubakichi, you're still the best toad in Mount Miyaboku when it comes to smell, right? Lord Jiraiya, uh, well, yes, if you don't count late Shima, of course. And uh, no offense, but you smell terrible right now. That's a good thing. I need you to track someone else smelling exactly like me around this area. On it! Sasuke leaps above the city streets. Several people still walk around them. Commerce is thriving, and people are just enjoying their life outdoors. Those images of people having fun trigger Sasuke's memories. He remembers when he still had a family and had dinner with them together. Team 7 comes to mind. They laughed while doing silly things during their missions. Those days seem to be a lifetime away. For a moment, Sasuke loses focus, but then he shakes his head, ashamed. They're gone. Those those days will never return. Those bonds are severed. But Sasuke has to be careful not to form any new bonds with his team. That's why he tries to keep his distance from them. He cannot allow that to happen again. Bonds cannot stay in the way of his vengeance. And yet, those three still cling to him. Jugo depends on Sasuke to remain sane. So he gets to rely on Sasuke to keep his life interesting. And Karin loves him for whatever reason Sasuke doesn't understand. She's just like Sakura was. The thought of Sakura makes his heart skip a beat. No, they're dead. There is no leaf village. They are only a stumbling block and now one of the most annoying of them has to be dealt with. Sasuke spots Jiraiya, also jumping from rooftop to rooftop. Jiraiya sees him at the same time. He unsummons a dog-sized toad that was leaping next to Jiraiya. Why didn't you run away? Jiraiya asks, as if I would run from someone weaker than me. Jiraiya wonders if the rest of Sasuke's team is around, ready to spring an ambush. Or maybe Sasuke gave his team different orders. Information is everything for a shinobi. What Sasuke learned from Gaizo may have shaped his decision. Jiraiya has no way of knowing. He didn't interrogate Gaizo, there was no time. Still, Sasuke actively seeking a fight makes Jiraiya feel on edge. Do you really want to do this here, Sasuke? There's a lot of people in this town. You don't care about them getting hurt? This is the best place. 
I can control my jutsu. I will cause no collateral damage. You, on the other hand, if you're anything like your pupil, will have trouble holding your jutsu back. And you wouldn't want to hurt the people in this town, right? Jiraiya grimaces in frustration. Very well then. I see you've learned a lot from Orochimaru. The setting sun bathes both ninjas who stand 20 meters away from each other on the rooftops. A sudden gust of chilly wind hits them, blowing their hair. My grappling hair jutsus won't work because of his lightning style. I have one chance to make this right. Saikichi, I'm counting on you, Jiraiya thinks. Sasuke jumps up, arcing towards Jiraiya's direction. Kibari Senbon! Chidori Senbon! Jiraiya shoots needles from his hair as Sasuke shoots lightning needles from his hand. The thin projectiles clash midair, canceling each other out as Sasuke continues to cruise above Jiraiya. The sage weaves hand signs, spitting a fire missile towards Sasuke, who weaves one-handed seals, spitting water that forms an orb around him. The fire impacts the water causing an explosion, but Sasuke is not hurt. The people below scream, noticing the battle raging on the rooftops. Sasuke draws his sword, infusing it with lightning. Jiraiya dashes out of the way as Sasuke lands where he stood, swinging and missing a slashing blow. Sasuke uses his free hand to ignite a Chidori and extends it as a spear, slashing at Jiraiya who's now out of melee range. He ducks. The lightning spear shears a bit of his hair as the Sanin jumps away to another rooftop. Sasuke leaps after him and slashes at him again with a spear. Jiraiya dodges and closes the distance as the Chidori cuts the tiles and wood from the rooftop. Jiraiya throws a punch, but Sasuke thrusts his sword at Jiraiya's arm, piercing through it, not letting Jiraiya hit him. The sage puffs away into white smoke. He was a shadow clone from the beginning, the same trick he used before. Rasengan! Jiraiya strikes Sasuke from behind. He screams in pain but his agony turns into laughter, a familiar laughter. Sasuke's neck turns 180 degrees towards Jiraiya. The face who gazes upon the Sanin is not Sasuke's, but Orochimaru's. The Rasengan fizzles out and Orochimaru imprisons Jiraiya with his snakes. Orochimaru now turns 180 degrees, aligning itself with his head. Just give up, Jiraiya. There's nothing you can do here anymore. Just like you couldn't do anything before. Jiraiya is stunned. Genjutsu? But when? He hadn't looked at Sasuke's eyes the entire fight. He was sure Sasuke didn't use any other types of genjutsu as well. It suddenly hits Jiraiya. Down in the sewers, when he saw Sasuke's dark outline coming towards him, he couldn't see the boy's face because Sasuke was backlit by the light coming from behind. But from Sasuke's point of view, Jiraiya's face was fairly illuminated, meaning he could establish eye contact and cast the genjutsu on Jiraiya without him even realizing. Jiraiya couldn't see Sasuke's eyes to avoid his gaze. He should have been more careful. Uchiha's really are something. To put him under the subtle genjutsu, he didn't realize it at all. The invasive genjutsu chakra remained dormant within Jiraiya's own chakra network until Sasuke activated the genjutsu. Orochimaru's snakes grapple and bite Jiraiya, causing pain and exerting enough force to crush him. He cannot move a muscle. It's impossible to break out of it. The power of this illusion. Jiraiya has never felt anything like it. Sasuke stares at the paralyzed old man. He waited to activate his genjutsu at the proper moment, when he knew Jiraiya would strike him from behind after the shadow clone was destroyed. Sasuke knew that if Orochimaru couldn't do anything against his genjutsu, Jiraiya would be completely helpless. Now, a few well-placed Chidori needles will incapacitate him, and Sasuke will be free to rejoin his team in the pursuit for Itachi without the interference of the Leaf Village. Sasuke weaves one-handed seals, activating a Chidori and readying it to shoot needles at Jiraiya's arms and legs. Water style! Water trumpet! The hound-like toe that had disappeared before Sasuke and Jiraiya met each other emerges from behind Sasuke, spitting a violent jet of water towards him. Sasuke dodges it and tosses the Chidori needles towards him instead, hitting the creature's arms and legs. The toad yelps in pain and turns into smoke. Odamara Sengan! Jiraiya strikes a massive Rasengan blow against Sasuke's back. Chakra oozes in spiral motion as the ferocious orb of Chakra 
deals devastating damage to Sasuke. He regurgitates blood, his muscles don't respond, the pain is overwhelming. How is it possible? No! But remembering Itachi, he musters the resolve to infuse his chakra and ignite a Chidori stream. Lightning envelops his body and mixes with the blood being drawn by the giant Rasengan, hitting Jiraiya as well. The sage twists his Rasengan hand, launching Sasuke with amazing speed. The sphere of chakra envelops Helping him and piercing through several buildings along the way, breaking through the walls as though they weren't even there. Sasuke lands on the ground as people run away screaming in fear. Sasuke forces himself to stand up but stumbles back into the ground, coughing up more blood. Realizing several of his ribs were destroyed and his internal organs took severe damage, Jiraiya looks at the trail of debris created by the Rasengan that dragged Sasuke. I hope nobody got hit along the way. I did I didn't want to launch him, but I had no choice. With that lightning enveloping me, maybe it was too rough. But if he was able to contend against Naruto's fifth tail, he should survive this attack and be weakened enough for me to drag him back to the village. Jiraiya thinks, landing 10 meters away from Sasuke. The boy crawls, bleeding from his back and mouth. Lion mane! Jiraiya's hair erupts into motion, entangling and immobilizing Sasuke. It's over, Sasuke. I'm taking you back, like it or not. Don't resist. Sasuke looks at Jiraiya, trying to understand. Jiraiya created a shadow clone before he met Sasuke on the rooftop and sent that shadow clone instead of his real self. Sasuke thought Jiraiya had just unsummoned the toad before he arrived, but the original Jiraiya who stood behind actually summoned the hound-like toad to his location, making it disappear from Sasuke's view. The toad waited for the opportune moment to attack Sasuke from behind and distract him. But how did Jiraiya break out of his genjutsu? What's strange is that it seems like Jiraiya was waiting for him to be trapped in a Genjutsu so that he could use that moment of chance to strike Sasuke from behind when Sasuke believed he had won the fight. But how? Did something break him out? Who? Someone using an invisibility jutsu? But his Sharingan couldn't see anybody else's chakra. Jiraiya's plan worked. Chisai Kichi stayed inside Jiraiya's clothes. The special thing about that toad is that his chakra reserves are so low and subtle that even the Sharingan couldn't see them very well. For the Sharingan, the toad's chakra was mixed with Jiraiya's, as though they were just one being. Jiraiya's chakra eclipses him like the sun snuffs out the stars during the day, meaning that Chisai Kichi could wait for the right moment when Sasuke caught Jiraiya in his genjutsu and release Jiraiya from it. The the problem is that Chisai Kichi has such a small chakra pool that he can only break someone else out of a genjutsu once per day. Jiraiya already unsummoned him as he won't be able to help Jiraiya anymore. But as Jiraiya expected, the Rasengan was enough to incapacitate Sasuke, not killing him. Sasuke. Come on, it's time to go home. Don't worry, the Leaf Village will prioritize Itachi's elimination. You think you know everything. You and the Leaf are so full of yourselves. You will never understand. This is my revenge! Sasuke opens his mouth. It's uncanny. His cheeks rip apart and a new Sasuke emerges from it, covered in thick sludge. What? That's Rochimaru's substitution jutsu! But how is it possible? Jiraiya thinks. Sasuke ignites a Chidori dashing towards him. Jiraiya tosses a smoke bomb on the ground, covering his retreat as he jumps towards the rooftop again. Sasuke gives chase, pursuing Jiraiya. Both of them leap from building to building. Their bodies blurry from sheer speed. The people below still running, creating a chaotic atmosphere, especially after so many buildings have been damaged. Jiraiya zigzags, using the uneven terrain of the rooftops to stay out of Sasuke's sight. But how can he use that jutsu? Orochimaru was the only one capable of performing the skin change substitution. Could it be that Sasuke somehow assimilated his powers? Jiraiya wonders. A shuriken flying in a dramatic curving arc streaks towards Jiraiya's direction. He can't see where Sasuke tossed it from, hence the arc. Jiraiya jumps out of the way, but a kunai appears from behind him, flying towards the exact position Jiraiya stepped to. He ducks down, avoiding the kunai, but it hits the shuriken in front of Jiraiya he had just dodged, deflecting it back towards him at very close range. Jiraiya forms a hand seal and a thick strand of hair leaps and grapples a section of the rooftop. He uses the hair to pull himself out of the way of the kunai that grazes his left shoulder, drawing blood. 
blood. A barrage of shurikens and kunais erupts all around Jiraiya. He can't see where Sasuke is. The weapons clash midair, diverting their directions and targeting Jiraiya, who evades them with the help from several strands of hair grappling and swinging through the rooftops, changing directions abruptly. When he is unable to dodge, the hair parries the weapons. This is the Uchiha shuriken jutsu. It's difficult to read the vectors of attack, but so long as I have my hair to help me with evasion, I'll be fine, Jiraiya thinks. Sasuke punches Jiraiya from behind, but he manages to guard against the blow. The Uchiha assaults Jiraiya with punches and kicks, putting a lot of pressure against the Sanin, who counters, aiming quick jabs at Sasuke's face. He uses his Sharingan precognition to get out of the way of the strikes. The two engage in a lengthy taijutsu exchange, leaping from rooftop to rooftop, clashing against each other. Sasuke purposely aiming at Jiraiya's hands, not allowing him to form hand seals. The people below now watch the fight, having calmed down from the initial burst of violence. A squadron of seven hot spring ninjas converge on the two fighters. Stop right there! You are under arrest! Jiraiya and Sasuke continue to fight hand to hand atop the city. The hot spring ninjas dash at them, but Sasuke and Jiraiya barely even acknowledge their presence. They use taijutsu to swiftly defeat the squadron without even breaking away from their exchange, knocking them all unconscious. He has changed tactics. Taijutsu and shuriken jutsu. Orochimaru's skin change consumes an unreasonable amount of chakra. He's trying to conserve as much as he can. His movements are also slower than before. I thought I would have no chance contending with his speed, but now... Are you getting tired, Sasuke? Jiraiya thinks, landing an uppercut on his chin. You'll see that an old man can still punch pretty hard. The Uchiha stumbles back, giving Jiraiya time to weave hand signs. His hair springs into motion, enveloping Sasuke. Lion spikes! Thin spikes form on Jiraiya's hair, piercing Sasuke's skin. But no blood is drawn. Rather, Sasuke leaks flames. His body transforms into fire and explodes, hitting and burning Jiraiya. The fire wave launches him backwards, flying through the air. I see, he wasn't as fast as before because he was a fire clone. He must have done it when he was tossing kunais out of sight, Jiraiya thinks, wrapping his hair around a large pole to stop his momentum. A large snake wraps itself around the section of hair gripping the pole. Jiraiya forces the hair to disentangle itself, it even pierces the snake, but the snake is too firm. Sasuke appears from the other side. He summoned the snake beforehand to immobilize Jiraiya movements. He jumps up, still hampered by his grappled hair, and weaves hand signs, breathing fire towards Sasuke. The Uchiha uses one hidden shadow snake that bites a section of the roof, pulling Sasuke out of the way of the fire. He launches another snake that bites the same pole Jiraiya's hair is grappled, and uses it as leverage to swing himself towards Jiraiya with insane speed, landing a massive kick on Jiraiya's face. A section of his elongated hair rips. The power of the blow sends Jiraiya flying straight into a large building wall that cracks and breaks, deflecting Jiraiya's body into the ground. The strike stuns him. That's the perfect chance for Sasuke to win the fight. He weaves one-handed seals to shoot Chidori needles and incapacitate him with a section of the wall he kicked Jiraiya against begins to fall down. A boy and a girl that watch the fight below stand right where the wall will land. Sasuke looks at them. If he doesn't do anything, the kids will be crushed, and if he attacks Jiraiya, he won't have any time. Sasuke dives towards the children using all of his speed. He hugs them, each in one of his arms, getting them out of the way of the wall as it impacts the ground behind him. Sasuke puts them on the ground, their small faces scared as they run away, crying. Jiraiya stands up, his face bleeding from the kick he took. You may have his jutsu, but you're not like Orochimaru, Sasuke. It's not too late for you, Jiraiya says, caressing his face and spitting some blood on the ground. Shut your mouth. I'm done with you. All of you. The dark patterns of the first stage of the curse mark spread around Sasuke's skin. His body emanates purple chakra that ripples around Sasuke and cracks the ground near him. Sasuke erupts into motion, his body a blur, dashing straight towards Jiraiya. His speed is much more intense than before. Sasuke 
unleashes a barrage of taijutsu strikes that Jiraiya cannot contend with. Hitting blow after blow, Jiraiya puts up his guard but the strength and speed of Sasuke's moves are on a different level now. He's being hyper aggressive. He has to finish the fight before he runs out of chakra. That's why he's resorting to the curse mark power not his own chakra. But now I can take this fight to the outside of the town. He will give chase. He has to finish it quick. Jiraiya thinks as Sasuke pummels him with powerful taijutsu strikes. His ribs crack as Sasuke lands a powerful kick to his side. Jiraiya uses his hair to block incoming strikes but Sasuke is much faster than the lion mane. He dodges them effortlessly and keeps on striking Jiraiya. But the sage has a plan. Even though he's taking a beating, he is moving towards outside of the town. As the last rays of sunlight disappear in the distance, Sasuke kicks Jiraiya, making him land outside of Makiri outpost. Earth style! Mud wall! Jiraiya erects a massive earth wall between himself and Sasuke, who punches through it, but he bought Jiraiya enough time to dash away. The terrain that surrounds the outpost is very open, so Sasuke can easily see where Jiraiya is going. He gives chase and quickly gains on Jiraiya, seeing he's much faster. Jiraiya weaves hand signs before Sasuke gets to him. Earth style, underworld swamp! The ground beneath Sasuke turns into a thick swamp, stopping him in his tracks as he begins to sink. Jiraiya keeps on weaving seals, summoning jutsu, fallen mayhem! Gamahiro, a green toad as large as Gamabu appears in the sky right above Sasuke and plummets down. Sasuke can't get out of the way, his waist deep into the swamp, which siphons him down with unbelievable force. The gargantuan creature impacts the ground, which erupts with violence, massive rocks, and the contents of the swamp are lifted into the air. Jiraiya fears the worst. He just killed Sasuke. There's no way he- Interesting jutsu combination. It would have worked against many lesser shinobi. Sasuke says, flying dozens of meters up in the air. The majestic wings of his curse mark stage 2 flap. The crimson twilight illuminates them and Sasuke's transformed appearance, creating an atmosphere of power that doesn't sit well with Jiraiya. He escaped my swamp just by flying up? The amount of strength this would require is unbelievable. If that incomplete stage of the curse mark was already making him so much more powerful. This completed stage is a huge problem. I underestimated him. I should have summoned those two before the fight. But why didn't he use the curse mark from the beginning? Of course, it's too dangerous for his body. So I just have to resist long enough for the curse mark to become unsustainable and then I can win the fight. Jiraiya thinks, jumping on top of the massive toad and undoing his swamp technique so he doesn't sink. Gamma Hero! We just need to hold on long enough enough until the enemy wavers. Lend me your strength! Yes. Lord Jiraiya. Gamahiro unsheathes the two massive swords that hang on his back and jumps, leaping towards Sasuke, breaking the ground underneath him. Sasuke forms hand signs and looks at Gamahiro. His yellow eyes turn red and gain three Sharingan Tomoe. The toad swings both his swords towards Jiraiya. What? He's powerful enough to control a summon like Gamahiro? Jiraiya thinks, jumping up, avoiding the sword strikes. Fire style. Great flame. Flame dragon! Three massive fire dragons burst from Sasuke's mouth, blasting their way to Jiraiya, who envelops himself with a hair shield, unable to dodge midair. The dragons impact and the fire explodes just above Gamahiro, plunging Jiraiya to the ground. His flaming body resembles a shooting star. Jiraiya remembers the first time Naruto perfected the Rasengan. He risked his life to protect Tsunade at all costs. Even in the face of defeat, Naruto prevailed, Naruto endured, now it's Jiraiya's time to endure. For Naruto's sake, he must bring Sasuke back to the leaf. Jiraiya hits the ground, forming a crater, but he lands on his feet. Wisps of fire still envelop him, tall and defiant, ready to endure whatever Sasuke throws at him. A wave of unfathomable agony hits Jiraiya, paralyzing his body. Blood spurts out of his torso. He looks down. A hand laced with lightning emerges from his 
own body. Sasuke struck him with a Chidori from behind, hitting his right shoulder. How could he be so fast to circumvent Jiraiya that way without him even realizing? The pain radiates from his shoulder to the rest of his body as the lightning paralyzes his muscles. You're probably the strongest ninja in the leaf. Tell Naruto and the others there is no one capable of stopping me, Sasuke says, as the curse mark retreats and he regains his normal appearance. Tell them that this is what happens to those that interfere with my revenge. Don't worry, I hit an unvital spot, but don't come after me again, or next time my Chidori will pierce through your heart. Sasuke yanks his hands drenched in blood out of Jiraiya's body, who falls to his knees, covering the gaping hole of his shoulder with his hand, trying to stop the bleeding. Sasuke walks away from Jiraiya with all the calm in the world. Wait, Sasuke! Jiraiya's words fall on deaf ears. Sasuke doesn't even look back. He comes closer to Gamahiro, undoing the genjutsu. He needs medical attention. You should take him back to the 5th Hokage, Sasuke says matter-of-factly. Gamahiro was surprised with the entire situation. He was in a trance, not understanding what happened. But once he sees Jiraiya on the ground, he swings one of his massive swords towards Sasuke. With the most casual of swings, Sasuke ignites Ichidori's spear and cuts the sword in half. He then jumps away, not uttering another word. Gamahiro motions towards Jiraiya, picking him up and putting him inside of his mouth. He is losing a lot of blood. His body body becomes increasingly dull and his vision starts to blur. Jiraiya's mind is a tempest of broken thoughts. He has failed Naruto again. He can never do anything right. He has been failing his godson ever since the day he was born. Images of that day flood his mind. Jiraiya's last memories before he loses consciousness are the dead bodies of Minato and Kushina and a tiny baby Jiraiya ran away from. Watch part 32 of the rewrite right here, like this video if you enjoyed it, and to support this series, it really helps me out, so please like this video, and also tell me what you think about the episode, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future rewrites, and thank you so much for watching.